Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, in the previous uh, video lecture, we have discussed about the fundamentals of localization and uh, in this video, we will be looking into uh, uh, odometric error related uh, uh, concepts and then uh, we will start the video. As discussed, um, this model has uh, two wheels, so uh, right wheel and uh, left wheel. And the front wheel is uh, easily uh, steerable uh, wheel, which will be uh, based on the forces that are imparted on this thing. So if a larger force is imparted on this uh, particular um, wheel, uh, which is a, a omnidirectional wheel, so it will move in that particular direction. So uh, it has uh, a heading velocity V of T, which varies with respect to time. And then um, uh, it has um, an angular um, orientation of this thing. So only two concepts uh, can be considered uh, in this. So as discussed, we have uh, uh, particular challenges that are associated with the sensors. So that's the primary part. Uh, and the rest of the two things we have already discussed, sensor noise. So in this, in this model, what we have is uh, two encoders that are based on either side of the wheels. So we have one encoder on the right side, other encoder on the left side. So we'll get two different datas uh, for one particular position. So let us now discuss about the uh, odometric position estimation and its error model. Uh, we are assuming uh, the position uh, is being represented by only two terms that is x and y and uh, one more term that is here uh, theta which is uh, an angular uh, orientation of the robot that is present here. And it is, it is moving in a fixed frame. So let us uh, go uh, into the matrix part of it. So in metrics, what we have is uh, three fundamental terms that is x and y and then the theta. So this gives us the position of this uh, particular robot. So we have to estimate this p that is the position. Uh, let us consider this to be a point. So it becomes very easy to understand about a point p. Uh, so the rate of change of displacement in this case uh, is given by delta x which is equal to delta s uh, cos theta plus delta theta by 2. So uh, delta x is change in the in the x direction. Similarly, we have delta y that is change in the y direction, which is given by delta s. Uh, what is this delta s? Uh, it is very much clearly given in this case. Uh, let us go deeper into that. Let us first start with the uh, y part. So it is uh, delta s sine theta plus uh, delta theta by two, and the theta is given by delta s r. That is, um, if you could just check we have delta s that is a travel distances for the right and the left wheel. So the, it's basically the change in the displacement of the wheel. So it is uh, mentioned for both the wheels that is delta s r, s suffix r and delta s suffix l divided by b. So where b is the distance between the two wheels of the differential drive. Uh, so that value can be estimated uh, by using this formula where delta s is the the uh, displacement that occurs um, in between these two wheels uh, which are summed up together and divided by two so we'll get an average displacement of the wheels in this case so uh, uh, as as mentioned earlier so delta x is the travel distance and delta y is the travel distance in y direction delta x is in x direction delta theta is the angular orientation and uh, delta s r and delta s l are the travel distances for right and the left wheel respectively um, let us move on to the next part. So how to uh, uh, estimate an error or how to estimate the position or change in position first and then let us move on to the next part. So let us uh, check um, delta, uh, the p dash or the positional change that has occurred uh, will have an impact on x, will have an impact on y, will have an impact on theta. So it is nothing but the previous position which is this one. So the previous position is this one. So this one plus the change in all these things, that is uh, the change in uh, the x, change in y and change in uh, uh, the theta. So we have uh, the previous position plus uh, delta s cos theta plus theta delta theta by 2 and then delta s sine theta uh, plus theta delta theta by 2 and the change in the theta itself. So that will become the same thing. So that is x, y and z. So that is delta delta x, um, that is the, a combination would become x plus delta x, y plus delta y and theta plus delta theta would be the change in the 
the new position so the new position is being uh, written as the previous position plus the change in the previous position or the change in the position is considered to be the new position so uh, if you could check uh, p dash is a function of x y theta delta sr and S delta sl so that means so any change in the position uh, can be written in terms of x y and theta and uh, delta sr and delta sl whereas if you know delta sr and delta sl we can estimate most of the positions because delta sr and delta uh, sl are the interrelated terms with x and uh, y and theta you can just check uh, you can have an overlook here uh, uh, it is uh, delta x is delta s cos theta whereas s is this one so if you know the fundamental things that is delta s and delta uh, sr and delta sl we can estimate the new position so that's why i have written here the it's a function of x y theta delta sr and delta sl which is in turn given uh, by this formula which is uh, whereas s yes, s is given uh, by delta sr and delta sl divided by 2 and into cos theta plus uh, delta theta by 2 delta theta is again given by delta sr minus delta sl by 2b so uh, you can just uh, rewrite this formula as this one that is even for delta y we can rewrite the formula like delta sr plus delta sl by 2 into sine uh, theta plus uh, uh, delta sr minus delta sl by 2b whereas delta uh, theta would become delta sr minus delta sl by 2 and uh, uh, what is uh, the concept of covariance that is uh, uh, given in this uh, um, uh, uh, odometric position estimation is that so how do we correlate or how they are both uh, interrelated with each other so what is the covariance concept so uh, what is this uh, concept of covariance is for example if delta s varies what would be the impact on delta s so that is the covariance so so we have an interrelated matrix which is a 2 cross 2 that is given here and and it is uh, uh, very clearly given as uh, it is a, a, a complex term which has both kr and a modulus of sr irrespective of the sign followed by a 0 and then 0 uh, kl followed by a modulus of delta sl so what is this uh, kr and K so uh, this uh, kr and kl are uh, deterministic uh, constants that that defines uh, the error with respect to the uh, delta sr and then delta sl so that becomes kr and kl respectively so if you just write uh, uh, the covariance uh, uh, formula so it's it's a function of uh, change in position and then uh, which is a combination of all positions and then uh, uh, and, and, a, and a change in the uh, transpose of the function and then change in the function with with respect to uh, right and left changes and then uh, followed by the covariance and then uh, and it's a function of uh, uh, a transpose function of we are both rl and tl so uh, this is a complete uh, equation for change in the position so which can be given by uh, uh, fp f suffix p is equal to uh, delta p uh, 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 delta p's function uh, which is uh, fundamentally the transpose of your function uh, that is very much clearly given here it's it's a it's a partial differential uh, function of x partial differential function of y and then partial differential function of theta which is uh, written in the matrix form as 1 0 and delta minus uh, uh, delta sin theta uh, plus theta delta theta by 2 and then 0 1 uh, which th this is fundamentally the jacobian of your fp which is uh, developed in a matrix form similarly for f delta rl that is this part is uh, given as um, half cos uh, theta plus delta theta by 2 minus uh, delta sin to be uh, sin theta plus delta theta by 2 half cos theta plus delta theta by 2 plus uh, delta sin to be uh, sin theta plus delta theta by 2 and uh, for, the, for the later part that is this is uh, alone for the uh, right movement the right uh, wheel movement similarly for the left wheel movement we got the similar equation but you have uh, a negative term at the end uh, similarly for theta it is 1 by b uh, and then minus 1 by b that will that will generally become a zero if both uh, right and uh, left wheel positions are uh, uh, exactly moving with the uh, delta s l and delta 
yes uh, r respectively so ultimately this con this part would become zero and uh, this whole equation will be turned uh, in terms of uh, delta s uh, a, a, which is uh, delta s r plus delta s l by 2 that is the fundamental uh, uh, displacement that happens on the robot so if you just check the propagation in the odometer uh, would be uh, uh, it will be constantly increasing uh, if, the, if the error is const const constantly increasing the, the basic uh, part is you cannot mitigate the error to a larger extent ultimately there is a huge development in the error ultimately that will lead to a faulty representation similarly in terms of orientation when you are orienting when you are just uh, having a linear propagation in the odometer you have uh, a constant uh, uh, exponential change that occurs uh, in terms of uh, uh, error that is get, that gets accumulated uh, time by time so one rotation for example if there is a change of let us say 2 to 3 degrees uh, so that will gets accumulated for the next upcoming 2 degrees so that that whole thing will will uh, accumulate somewhere uh, around 360 so one rotation which creates um, around a 360 degree angular change so for example if the odometer is indicating five rotations so that ultimately leads to some somewhere around like 10 to 15 rotations that were already happened so this has to be completely mitigated only and if you have a knowledge on these two concepts and as well as the left and right uh, jacobian that is uh, produced here that's all for today thank you for watching the video